<laughs> down here at Inner Focus in Glenelg with yes. one of Australia's favourite sons, wrestling wise, anyway, Nick Armstrong. Welcome to the show, Nick. Thank you, Todd. Um, first off, mate, I, I do know you fairly well, so you are originally from like, Mount Gambier. Yep, correct? born in Mount Gambier. So how, how did you find wrestling up there? Because I, I know I grew up in a small town and we had two channels and none of them had wrestling. So was it the same for you guys or were you... First time I watched wrestling was at my friend uh, Justin's house and we sort of, I think we were just messing around, like uh, hanging out as kids, like 10 years old probably. I think we were playing Pokemon or something like that, running around the house and then I saw on the TV it was, it was either Stone Cold or, and, and Mankind or Mick Foley or something like that. Or was The Undertaker, I can't remember, but it was like, um, what's it called? Buried Alive match. Oh, yeah. I was like, why is this bull man beating up these guys? Like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Then, like, just loved it from there. Like, we went to the uh, to the video stores in Mount Gambia, and we used to, like, record, not record, like, we'd, we'd re-record the tapes as well with the double tape thing. Oh, yeah, So yeah, we could, yeah. um, so we could, yeah, <laughs> suss that out and watch, like, WrestleManias and stuff. I never got into WCW like early though, because I I thought Stone Cold and uh, Goldberg were the same person. <laughs> I was like, I was like, and I was like, because you know how you play those uh, video games like WCW yeah, yeah. Revenge. Yeah, and that was the hands down the best game. The that was a wicked. Yeah, that was. I love that game, but I love WWF. Yeah. So it was. Yeah, and I was like, I was why like, don't they just yeah. put the normal characters in? What, who's Kevin Nash? Yeah, I was like Stone Cold. Why is he called Goldberg? <laughs> and, um, and uh, I always chose Sting, though, because he had a baseball bat. I was like, well, no one's going to fucking beat the baseball guy. <laughs> I, mean, I start the match with a freaking bat. <laughs> oh, shit. So that was good. So I like, I like Sting, but I, was, I, was, I didn't know that there was two different things. But uh, it all started pretty much um, video stores. Uh, there was a place called Network Video in Mount Gambia. And what we'd always go and I would always like do doubles. It's like, oh, you know, you've had this three times. I'm like, yep. You know, I want to watch it again. <laughs> yep. And I'd I'd scan the, like the the back of the videos for matches. I'd look for the Hardy Boys, Too Cool. Um, who else did I look for? How I'm much like, easier it, is it nowadays with DVD? Oh, you can so just skip straight to the yeah. It's, it's so much better. Yeah. So like, you kids don't know. Fast fast forward. Uh, you know some of the shit oh. matches and. I'm like, who the hell is Taka Michinoku? <laughs> <laughs> He's a great worker uh, though. So like, yeah, now I look back, I'm like, oh wow. Like, I just movies? wanted to watch The Worm with like Scotty Too Hotty. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, um, so being that you, you sort of grew up in Gambia, yep. what what gave you the impetus to actually start training to wrestle? Well, when, we, when I was 15, um, me and my friends, we were doing uh, backyard wrestling at the time, um, which is not good. Controversial. Very controversial. Um, but I mean, in Mount Gamer, there's no, there's no wrestling at all. We, um, we pretty much were at school. We, we talk about wrestling. We'd write our own cards. We'd, um, you know, we'd go out in the oval and we'd practice. You know, whatever we'd practice, put the walls of Jericho on, or like, you know, just messing around as kids. So yeah. So from there, it was like shit. Like, you know, what, what do we do? Like, how do we, how do we get better? And it was. You know, messing around on the trampoline, and then it's like, well, you know, Mount Gambia it rains a lot, so, well, like, but like it would it'd probably rain every every weekend in Mount Gambia. It'd be sunny all week, and it would rain on the weekend. And we can't wrestle, damn it. Um, so, uh, me and, and my brother, um, we pretty much decided to go to Adelaide. Um, actually, before that, we there was a there was a show that come down to Mount Gambia. Um, it was the the guys that ran Joint Promotions. Yep. Um, so Cole Devani. Um, he he was the promoter for the show and he he organised it at the Ice House. Was Matty and Cree on those or? I saw Cree or someone that had dreadlocks that looked like Cree <laughs> doing a doing the ring setup and testing the the turnbuckles and I was like oh that guy looks a bit weird like um, and like and, you know, down the track you know end up working oh, working with him. That's mimic by the way for people at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um so we still like saw them setting up the show and um we were so excited I, I bought like a front row ticket um. And like, you know, was, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks or something wow. back then. Yeah, back then as well. So <laughs> I went down to Sports Power and bought a ticket. We, we went to the show and we loved it. We're like, this is like the first like proper pro wrestling live show. Um, Jack Hartley Jackson was on it. Um, Damien Slater was on it. There was a guy called Will Power that was on it. Um, who else was on it? What's the guy's name? Chopper Reed? Ch- uh, do you, not Chopper Reed. <laughs> What's the guy's name? Is there's a guy, there's an Australian wrestler called uh, Chopper. I can't remember his name. Coleman. Chopper Coleman. That's right. Not Chopper Reed. Chopper Coleman. <laughs> and he was like, he was a really good heel though, because he just he he stayed in gimmick the whole time, and um, you know, like 
It was a wicked show. Uh, Jag did an insane tote to the outside, big flip. Which which Jag was this? Was this? This is the extreme high fly. Skinny Jag. Yeah. yeah. Like shred, and he he looked like legit, like an actual pro wrestler. And I remember seeing him. Um, he had his his tights on, and he's like, you know, I'm like, this guy's like, he should go on TV. Like, mm. he looked like an actual wrestler, and that that was a big thing that I took from that. That and the awesome tote that he did. But I was like, holy crap! There's no. Uh, like safety padding, yeah. The ring, like the the barrier was close to the uh, to the when, ring in that. When I say skinny jag, I mean back in the day he was almost like a cruiserweight. Yeah, it was a cruiserweight. He before been, he put on a lot of muscle. Yeah, like eighty. He would have been like eighty or eighty or ninety kilos back yeah. then. So he was uh, he was lean and ripped and you know high flying, doing like sick runners and all that. So yeah, that was awesome. Um, so we watched that show. After the show, we we you know asked to like talk to the wrestlers and talk to the promoter about learning to do it and um, they were nice enough to talk to us backstage which is good um, again being young 15 not knowing anything about the business um, hey famous dad yeah <laughs> we so um so then we went up to, to Adelaide we did uh, two weekends up in Adelaide um, train with Cole Devani. Um that yeah, was intense drive up the train and then yeah we back, drove up right? so it was about five five and a half hours back then wow. um, drove up because again it was it was like North Adelaide and all that just yeah had no idea. Uh, we stayed at a caravan park, got the shit kicked out of us, which is good. Cold Vani, um, Cold Vani, I was, I was uh, again, 15 years old, very disrespectful, didn't really know too much about the world. I thought I was just a superstar and um, got taught pretty quick that uh, you don't, you know, don't mess with the pros. So yeah. I was, uh, I think I was laughing because uh, Cole said uh, his, his, um, one of his finishing moves was the uh, small package. And I was like, how's that a finisher? Being a little smart ass. And he goes, come here, I'll show you. So he goes to me in you know, like a front face type thing, like shoots me over and he's choked me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> not to the point where I was unconscious, but to the point where I like got a good lesson from it. I was like, I was like, okay, I got you. Yep, no worries. Yeah, right you are. Um, so again, me and my brother, uh, Jet Armstrong, we uh, we got in the ring as well. First first time I ever gave a back suplex in a professional ring and uh, we both were winded from that one. <laughs> we were like, ah, and so yeah. That's, uh, it was a good experience though, like we went up, um, Shit, how, like maybe six or seven dudes uh, went up for it. Did a couple of weeks, um, or like or like some weekend training. Well, and, were your mates or was it? Yeah, my friends. Yeah, my friends, my, me and my brother and my brother's friends as well. And the first, like the first morning after the first day, I was so sore. I could hardly move my neck. My back was so sore because we were running the ropes. We were learning how to bump. Um, you know, conditioning as well. Because I mean, could, like cold stress, good conditioning. Um, and yeah, it was, it was yeah, good experience. So from there again, like um, we like we did that, and then I think we did another one like, like a month or two later as well, because we just loved it. Like it was, yeah, it was awesome. And then from there, um, Jet moved up to Adelaide um, when he was 20, 21 maybe, and then I moved up when I was nineteen, a couple of years later, I think. Yeah, about a year or two later. So is Jet Jet's the older one. Jet's the older so one. I thought you were older. No, no, no way, way. no. Uh, taller. Probably because you're taller, yeah. Taller, but uh, no, Jet's three years older than me, so... Ah. Yeah. All right, so, and then you started training full-time with... Yeah, we started training full-time with, at the time, was uh, EPW, EPW Adelaide. Um, so that was uh, under Jack, Hartley Jackson, and... Who was uh, in your rookie class? Sort of shoot, let's think. Um, well, because I, I did a I did a tryout, and the tryouts uh, was two, two days back then. Um... A big day on the first day, and I think it was like a half day on the on the second day, and it's just conditioning and bear crawls and bumps and just oh, it's, yeah, <laughs> death. Yeah, so like you hear about it, you hear about the uh, the EPW tryout, and then you get there and you're like, holy crap! So it was good. I mean, it makes you work and it makes you respect um, everything that the wrestlers do. So it's good. Um, what else? Yeah, from there, I'm kind of trying to remember who was in the class. Um, I can't remember. I don't know if anyone sort of stuck around from that one. I can't. Yeah, I can't you remember. You and Jet Soul Survivors. Yeah, well, Jet Jet did it before me, so he he'd already done it, but he he did the tryout again, and all the all the all the pros there generally do the do the tryouts again just to to prove that they're legit and they're doing all the work that the uh, the new guys coming in yeah. you know trying to do as well. So I know I thought, um, when I did my tryout, um, Del Torino, yeah, or Bulldog, yeah, did the tryouts with us, and I didn't know. Yeah, because he was under a mask, I didn't know who he was. So I'm thinking, this guy's bloody good. He's really good. He's picking it up like that. I, yeah, if this, that's where you got to be. I can't do this. He's just getting it. Damn it. Uh, so, um, how long were you training before you debuted? And did you debut 
together as the Armstrongs or? I think it was about six months. I think it was six months um, before we debuted. I'm pretty sure. It was because uh, I didn't didn't like we were training, um, trying to get better, and obviously don't debut before you're ready. Because nah. I mean, you go out there and shit the bed. It's like, you know, what do you got to go from there? There's no second take. So. Yeah, exactly. And you go out and you want to be you want to be comfortable and you want to look the part and you don't want to go out and you know disrespect the business and disrespect um, everything that everyone else is sort of you know built towards. If you go out there and not make it make it look good, then it's like, you know. <laughs> just looks shit. Yeah. <laughs> just ruins it. So, so did you start out as the Armstrongs, or were you? Um, were you the, you're a mask gimmick, right? We did a mask gimmick for a bit. Yeah. Um, I won't say what the mask gimmick was. It was yeah, we did that for gimmick. we did that for a bit, which is good. And again, that taught me like everything's going to teach you a lesson in wrestling. Um, I wasn't really keen on that going from you know being super creative before um, you know with my, with my friends and wrestling and like <laughs> having complete control over that to going to a structured. Um, you're going under a hood, you know, um, this is your music, this is the moves you should be doing. Oh, so you got no... There was, there was... Um, Did you get any input, in, any input yeah, at all? Oh, there, yeah, or? heaps, yeah, there, there was, but at the time, I, it just felt restricted and I felt, I felt uh, confined in my thoughts. I couldn't really, I couldn't really uh, express myself the way I wanted to express myself, so, which, but again, it's going to teach you a good lesson of, you know, do the best with what you've got. Um, also taught me how to sell better um, wearing a hood. Again, using your arms, um, more at head movement, and because they can't see your face when you're under a mask, so it's like, well, how do I express what I'm feeling and what I'm doing? And uh, so yeah, it was, and it was good tag wrestling as well. It was completely different because I'd, I'd wanted to do the single stuff. I'm very much my own person, and I find that um, the tag stuff was different because again, I had to work with somebody, and somebody such as my brother, who's um, we wear yin and yang. So we're like again, <laughs> there's the good and the bad. Uh, <laughs> there's the Positive and negative. There's, you know, there's just different opinions and different things that we like to do. So, I mean, that's going to be that, great. That being said, though, your style is very similar. To oh, it. very similar because we've shaped it that way. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff that uh, that I look up to him with and that he does really, really well. And there's some things that I think that I can do better, psychology-wise as well. So, I'm like talking on a mic without getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that works good. <laughs> he likes to push the boundaries. I can't wait till we do. <laughs> So I'm so bringing up Supernova. Oh yes, Supernova was good. Supernova. <laughs> do you want to talk about Supernova? Or you want to yeah, we'll talk about Supernova here. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> Jet, Jet Armstrong decides to get on the microphone at this convention. My uh, first ever managing gig <laughs> was with him. So he, goes, he gets on the microphone and he just to like cuts a promo, like a heel promo. Just then, just quietly. This is like Supernova, so it's super PG. It's because there are kids everywhere. They're all like superheroes <laughs> and stuff. And I've I've gone on and done the generic the heel one just like um you guys are all keyboard warriors and what I have is a real life superhero right next to me <laughs> jacked, jacked up, up Jet Armstrong yes and he's sitting there he's five eight <laughs> barely five eight and he's uh, <laughs> he's wow he's jacked up he's got the lat spread he's flaring he's all like angry and he's just <laughs> telling everybody that they're all nerds and they're all keyboard warriors and. <laughs> He gets something and he goes, oh. I'm going to do something you can't or something. Yeah, I'm going to go find a hot chick. I'm going to go find bang. some hot chicks to bang. And <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Duke. Duke. Duke looks at him, the uh, the ring announcer dude. He's um he's looking at him and goes, oh, not cool, man. Yeah. Not cool. Grabs the microphone. <laughs> and Jet's pretty much banned from the, uh, from the yeah, promo. The funny thing is, like, Jet turns to me and he goes, did, did we do something wrong? <laughs> what do you mean, we? I'm fine. You're, you're in trouble, oh. brother. No, you, you know, it's that saying, it's easier to ask for, give, for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. And he's, a, right. he's a good example of that. So, I mean, if you do it, if you, if you follow the rules, you'll never get anywhere. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so how long did you um, wrestle at EPW Adelaide? Oh, I think from the start of training to the, to the, like, towards the end was well, it's just over a year, I reckon. Yeah. Did you ask um, before you left? or No, nah, no. Nah. We, uh, I think my last... My last tag, I think we had a tag match or something like that. Um, it was like it was a good experience, but um, at the time I was um, financially I was having some trouble, uh, like we just with, with work and stuff. Um, uh, so so at that stage I was just feeling stressed out and um, wasn't getting the creative outlet that I that I wanted to get from wrestling. Wasn't enjoying it, so I said, well, you know, I'm not going to do this if I'm not enjoying it, in, and pretty much um, decided to leave. Um, which you know it was a big thing because I, I love pro wrestling and that's um, 
you know, that's, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm here for. Um, I don't see myself doing anything else. So um, to have that, uh, to take that step back um, <clears throat> was, was super hard. Um, I was super nervous going in to talk to, to Jag about it because, again, he was my trainer. Um, you know, he puts a lot of effort into the guys and to, to, I, to feel like I'm letting him down, feel like I'm letting everyone else down. Um, wasn't like it wasn't a good feeling, but it like in hindsight, it was a really good decision because um, like you have to spread your wings. Yeah, yeah got to spread my wings to, to relax. Um, again, being nineteen, I was so young back then. I think I was nineteen. I might have been twenty. You would have been twenty. I would have been about twenty. Started. Yeah. So again, twenty years old, so young. Um, just uh, so getting out of that environment was um, was kind of good. It was kind of just to relax. Um, still kept in contact with some of the guys that had, that, that, were, that were there and had left and gone to, to Riot City Wrestling. Um, and we were a bit skeptical at first about, oh, you know, Riot City Wrestling, like, you know, we didn't, we, we thought that the product was shit, you know, we were just like, oh, you know, that didn't know how to work. Um, then coming coming over, um, going to a, like the first training we went to, um, Elliot Sexton um, and Jonah Rock were there and they were just two awesome dudes. They're, um, you know they they uh, and uh, uh, Rocky Monero he was there as well so those were some guys that were like you know we liked and we we wanted to get to know more and you know got along with really, really well um, come over to Wright City Wrestling and loved it so Mimic and and Grim two really cool dudes um, yeah <laughs> they're, no, they're, they're they're probably two of the nicest dudes uh, in Australian wrestling because they I mean they're genuine dudes as well which yeah. is awesome. Um, and that's why we continue to, to keep going with the right city because they're just, just wicked dudes. Um, and again, they, they have an appreciation for, for the wrestling and they, they let everyone have a go and it was good. So, I mean, I felt wicked. As soon as I come in, I felt great. Um, when we debuted, we had a match against the Rude Ones, Dell and Marvel, which is, you know, the crowd, like, who the fuck are these guys? Yeah. Like, you know, we got with some new gear. We still, you know, we still, you know, kept our athleticism and all that and we had some fancy Jim moves like baby John Cena he did yeah yeah <laughs> he was jacked up then as well so he's it was good um, coming in to, to, to work some new guys get some new experience a different crowd fucking awesome setup at Estonian Hall yeah it was wicked so like that was yeah that was a really I felt really, really good after that and um, what year we, was that oh shit 2010 or 2011 okay I'm really bad with dates yeah because I think Brody and I came in 2012 would have been yeah I'm not sure really yeah but yeah it was good it was awesome that fun days to work as well yeah how long how long have you been wrestling all up before you decided to go over to Canada to train with Lance Storm so and why, what was your sort of the impetus to do that like how did you hear about it and all of that sort of stuff so I heard about um, wrestling like Lance Storm school through Carlo Cannon who's a pro wrestler in Melbourne um, current MCW champion uh, and well deserved being the MCW champion he's a very intelligent dude very smart um, very switched on guy so he uh, we were talking about I think we worked a match at uh, Thebden Thebden Theatre and um, he a big advice he told me was um, like never forget why you got into pro wrestling never um, you know like you know as bad as things can get and and as shit, as shit times you have, like always remember why you got into it and um, what you love about it because like no one can take that away from you. And I was like, dude, that's, you know, that's awesome. That stuck with me for, like, I don't know if he would have remembered that, but like it, it stuck with me. So we were talking again. I can't remember where it was. We were, I think, I'm not sure if we were working a show or we are just talking about, um, you know, other options. And he's like, you should go to, you know, go do Lance at school. And I was like, oh. You know, I have to pay money and I have to, <laughs> have to like leave the country. Oh, and I was money. like, oh. and I was like, I was like, I don't know if it, yeah, I don't know. And he's like, just fucking do it, man. Like, and I was like, all right. So I did it, and it was the best thing I ever did. So that was in uh, I did the May 2012 class. Um, you were there with Rollins. Yeah, right? Ryan Rollins was there. Casey Cassidy, Kellyanne English, um, Carlo come over for the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, last maybe two months. Was it Tully Blanchard's son? No, everyone always asks. So yeah. this guy called Lee Blanchard over in uh, in in the states. Only because I'm the, one of the biggest. Tully Blanchard, yeah, yeah, world, yeah. You know. Well, I mean, Jim Jim Ross was uh, was on Twitter and he's he's talking about uh, Lance's Lance's school and then I think he retweeted. Uh, I think Lance is saying that you've got an Oklahoma guy there, so he actually got dubbed the name Oklahoma okay. over there. So it's like Oklahoma, come on. Uh, <laughs> 
he was a good dude though so I actually um, we, we stayed at the same house uh, there which is good so we become really good friends which is good <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah it was good so and you wrestled a little bit over there where you were yeah I wrestled for a company called PWA um, they're in Calgary and Edmonton so I worked two shows in Calgary and one show in Edmonton and you worked both as a heel and face uh, yeah, first show I worked as a, as a, as a heel, so we went to, got, got a, uh, a text or a call in the morning from Carlo um, saying, hey, there's a spot on the show, because um, I mean, things over in, in Canada are so much different to Australia, like, it's like, look, there's a spot that's opened up, like, you coming? And I was like, oh, uh, you know, I don't know, oh, you, and I started to get a bit nervous. Is it one like, of those things where you have to ask Lance? No, because Lance, Lance is booking it. Oh, so okay. Lance is like, look, oh, okay. there's a spot in the show. Because we'd, 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 uh, it was early, like, it was like maybe three or four weeks in um, for, for training, and Lance is like, um, yeah, you can work it. Because like, he, he, he sort of gauges how good the guys are um, at the time. Um, and says, you know, you can go, go work this match against this guy. So I rocked up, uh, drove, we drove to Edmonton, I think it was like two and a half, three hours. I think, got a terrible, terrible memory. Um, ended up working Ryan Rollins in my first match in Canada, and it was I think like eight eight minute match or something like that. I was a bad guy, he was a good guy, and it was good, man. It was awesome. So yeah, Lance was there. So like, the biggest thing was like wrestling in front of Lance, and you know, getting some criticism, criticism and feedback, which is always good to to better yourself. So that was kick ass. Yeah. Rollins is awesome, man. He's so easy to work. He's a really, really good dude. It seems to adapt it to Lucha style. Oh, massively. Easily. Yeah, yeah. He's um, he's he, the thing is that like, he works all the high flying stuff, but his psychology is really good as well. So yeah. he knows he knows how to get a great reaction. He when, knows how to stay in gimmick, which is a yeah. lot of guys. A lot of guys nowadays don't. He's you he's see a, him that they walk down to the ring and they're in their gimmick and they're in, but as soon as the bell rings, it's like I'm a wrestler now. He's on the whole time. Rollins yeah. is wicked, <clears> and he makes everyone look fucking awesome. So. He's wicked, dude. How long does the Lance course go for? Uh, 12 weeks. So 12 weeks. So three months. Yeah, three months. Uh, it's Monday to Friday. I think most of his classes were from, either, I think it was either from 9 to 12 or from 10 to 1. But for us, because we had a bigger class, we had about 20 people when okay. we first started. And that was, um, so that was 20 people. And we, we went from 9 to 1 every day. Was there anyone here, <clears throat> anyone else in that class that's gone on to do anything else or that you heard of? Um, there's, a, there's a guy in France. He's wrestling in France promotion over there. Um, Guillaume is his name. He's a good dude. Um, stereo, stereotypical French guy. Um, he must like, have, like to have one in every. <laughs> <laughs> we did this thing. We did this spot where like he'd put a headlock on someone and he'd be like, ha ha, and then like, <laughs> like we just like you just become the thing that he just did all the time, yeah. which is good. Um, so yeah, he, he was good. There's uh, like the, the other guys. There's a guy called Sal. He works in uh, in America. He does heaps of different different promotions over there. He's like one of the nicest guys in pro wrestling. Um, so he's really, really good. Um, I'm trying to think who else is there. Obviously you got Carlo, Casey, yeah, uh, Kelly, um, and and Rollins who's working over in, in Mexico. Um, the other guys, I think they're still training. There's another guy that's working at K one of Kendrick's school. Right? Okay. Kendrick's school. Um, so still keep in contact, and that's the best thing about Lance's school. Is like you make all these contacts, yeah. you make twenty plus contacts, yeah. um, different people, different you know scenarios and all that. And then, but then they're friends for life because you spend so much time with them, developing your skills and your character, and you know getting out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. First day we rocked up, it was like I was so shy. It was the first time I ever met like a like a former WWE superstar, and I was like, oh, this Lance Storm, and I was like <laughs> sitting down. It was quiet. Everyone was nervous. And then you know, go, like fast forward twelve weeks, cracking jokes, everyone's having fun. Yeah. It's still serious, and we still work, but it's so much more relaxed. Um, is, it, is it a sort of a thing where, like, now you could maybe message him and say, "Can you look at this and tell me what I'm doing wrong?" If, if I if I feel like you are, or yeah, definitely, yeah. He's um he's always open to, to emails and things like that. Um, I've even emailed, emailed him recently uh, some footage from a match with. Rollins and Carlo, um, yeah, like a tag match that we from did. From 100? Yeah, from RCW 100, and um, just asked for some feedback and stuff, so I'm just waiting to hear back, so <laughs> hopefully he gets back to me, which would be good. Um, he's, he's, his class is awesome, man. I mean, like five days a week we were wrestling, um, you know, f you know five, five hours a day. We'd So we'd wake up, eat, wrestle for five hours, eat again, go home, sit down for like half an hour, eat, go to the train, eat. <laughs> Um, go to bed and then wake up and do that again and then you hit the weekends and the lady I was staying with 
she was the most energetic lady I've ever met. And um, she's like, let's go hiking. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, I've just been like training all week. You know, I've been, I've trained weights every day, um, you know, doing extra cardio, doing, you know, the, the wrestling, the bumping, the, you know, the drills, everything. I just want to sit down and she's like, no, nah, let's go hiking. You got to go see Banff. And I'm like, fuck's sake. All right. <laughs> but it's good. Like, it's good. She got me out of the house and she was kicking my ass, like walking up the hills and all yeah. that. Um, and then, you know, other days we'd like, again, we'd wrestled some shows like, you know, in Edmonton and stuff. That was kick ass, man. Awesome dudes. Chris Knight, an Australian wrestler. He's wicked, man. He's, uh, he's, he lives over there. Yeah, he's so on he, the first season with Carlo. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Um, wrestling. What's it The called? World of Hurt. World of Hurt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The reality TV there series, yeah. Lance talked about that and how uh, how much of a work reality TV is. And it's <laughs> like you see all these people watching, uh, like, what is it? True Divas? Is it True Divas? Yeah, Total Divas. Total Divas. True Long Island Ice. <laughs> yeah, fucking the Divas one. Um, I haven't, I haven't, I've only watched snippets of it, but just reality TV shits me, man. Like, I can't watch it. It's too. It's just such a work. It's See, like the one, the one thing I will say out of watching Total Divas is it actually made me like Daniel Bryan more. Yeah, because he's just like I don't care. I just do it. <laughs> Whatever. He's, he's like, got a good that, attitude. Yeah, yeah. the dog on over there, Divas stuff. He's like, why are you doing this? Uh. Why? I li- let's just go here and play with my dog <laughs> I'll do that we'll just do that yeah, yeah. that's and, good man and also shows how much of a almost guarded pro that John Cena is yeah he never really gives anything away even when it's a scripted thing you can tell he's thinking about what the thing you is have supposed to, to say here you have to like when you're, when you're that high up man the higher you are the harder you fall yeah um it's <laughs> a good one yeah <laughs> All right, getting back to you. Yo. All right. Tag wrestling or singles, which one do you prefer? Depends on the uh, circumstance. Have you ever had a, like, a, re- a regular tag partner other than your brother? No. Nope. Or has it just always been? No, nah, it's always been my brother. Yeah, Jet. So um, I love tag tag matches. I think they can get a really good emotion. They get a, such a simple story. Um, I'm a massive fan of tag wrestling. Yeah, I love it. I can, I can you can get like awesome reactions. We've had some kick-ass tag matches against Sex Rock. Which is uh, Jonah Rock and Elliot Sexton, um, Carlo Cannon and Ryan Rollins have been some really good opponents for us. So I think I heard the ladder match you had in MCW was pretty. Yeah, awesome against Hardway Inc. Yeah, that was good. These guys are great. The um, the yeah, that was a really like that was a really uh, good story that we told. Um, and I think a lot of people forget in pro wrestling, it's more about the story than the actual spots exactly right. and moves and you know do a fucking runner off a ladder. It's like well, you've got to set up everything. So it means something, yeah. and don't just have you know wasted, you know wasted movements and wasted reactions and all that, and don't just do a chop for the sake of doing a chop. You know yeah. what I mean? Too many people. Are just... If if there is one thing I've learnt from like Mimic and Grim is that there's, every match has to have levels. Yeah, big time. There's there's I mean, the levels. Are, uh, that's the one thing that uh, that Carlo was teaching us is like, don't just go up top here. You know what I mean? Like bring them down then bring them up and yeah. you know it's, it's a roller coaster you want to you've really got to want them to want you yeah. to tag, tag your brother in or you yeah. know what I mean get that hot tag get it and, and work can, for it and yeah. when you've been watching it for a while it's so behind us you can tell when somebody's missed that chance mm. it's like oh you just lost the crowd big time oh. and knowing when to pull the trigger and when to wait and wait and wait and it's building that anticipation um, you see uh, you see those um, like video movie trailers I mean, they got the music and it'll start like a bit of, you know, boom, and then yeah. it'll go to, you know, something a little bit quiet, you know, and then it'll go boom, bring it up towards the end, and yeah, yeah, it's good, man. There's a the different levels, um, so it's important. Um, where do you see your future, like, sort of overseas or just in Australia wrestling? Would you like to go back over there? And I'd love to go or? back over there. So that's the plan at the moment. I really want to go back over. Um, it's. Uh, again, I'm open to learning all sorts of pro wrestling. Like I love, I've been going into a lot more of the uh, the Jap style at the moment. Been watching a lot of uh, Prince Devitt stuff. Kenny Omega's the fucking man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, yeah. So I love, I love, you know, I love watching that. Um, I went and saw Nakamura. Yeah, Slater. Yeah, and that was. Yeah, another level. Yeah, Slater's a pro, man. I was like, actually sitting next to. Um, 
Luke Santa Maria. Yeah. And at the end of it, that's an, that's another level to what we we see. There's the thing is like Australian wrestling has got some really fucking good workers. Yeah. They got they got guys that on a bigger platform can perform really really well. Um, yeah. Well, like it was him and Slater. So yeah. Um, and Slater's. like it's just like you know there's so much potential in Australia. Um, there's just it, it it is a business at the end of the day, and unless we get some uh, some proper business. You know, happening. Yep. Um, it's never going to grow, and that's that's the difference between some of the companies in you know the states and and again in Japan. I mean, they've got bigger funding. They've got intelligent business people who are running the the shit. Mm. Um, there's a lot of shit indies in America as well. There's a lot of. I still contend if if ROH had the money behind them that TNA had, mm. that they would be killing TNA. Depends on depends on who's running it, and depends on their vision as well. So. Like oh, re- res- wrestling wise, definitely they've yeah. got some really creative guys. I mean, I, I watched PWG the other day. Yeah, but and the thing is like, that they oh. don't blow their their angles. Yeah, they, that's good. They like keep their angles well rounded, and there's never mm. like you know what I mean. There's not a hint of oh that worked in the WWE, so we'll give it a yeah. crack. Whereas you sort of see that a hell of a lot in TNA. Yeah, especially lately, big time. We're just like oh, you just what like, are you trying? You to can't you can't connect with it because it's just like what the hell is going on? Like mm. you hear about what happened with. Tino with the MVP thing? I've not. What happened? Well, MVP's in the main event with EY at Slammiversary, right? Yep. Now, they tape all their impacts like six or seven in a row. Yep. So, like, over a course of a week, they'll do six weeks of thing. Yeah. So, they've taped every impact up to the pay-per-view. And MVP did his knee on a house show this weekend. Oh, you're joking. So, now they've got every impact taped Fuck. all the way up. With the storyline building to those two having a match, mm. and now he's going to come out at the the pay per view, and they don't know what's going to happen. What's that? Would you know what happened to his knee? Is it? I don't know exactly, but there's a good there's a good word in that he won't be able to wrestle. Shit. So at the pay per view, he's going to have to come out and go. I've done this. But he's in a stable though, so the, maybe. Yeah, can... but that's the thing. It'll be Lashley. But then again, mm. if in those in those weeks you fed him Lashley and you fed him, yeah, say Kenny King, and you fed him all these guys. It'll be like, he always like, well, I already went through Lashley. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, it's so going to be hard for him, man. I don't know. That mm. sucks. Injuries suck. Not fun. That's, that, that I find is the hardest thing with pro wrestling. From a booking standpoint, yeah. is injuries. It's because it's the one thing you can't, you can't account for. Mm. You can set out as many months in advance, but you can't account for an injury. You can't. And that's, uh, but that's just the world, man. That's the same as in any sport as well. Exactly right. You can, you know, shit can go down. Um, favorite guys you've worked both here and over in Canada. Um, favorite guys I've worked. Love wrestling Elliot Sexton and Jonah Rock. Those guys are cool. Um, God, they haven't teamed up in ages either, have they? No, not for a while. I don't think they're um they do they do, they're, they're great as a tag. They're the greatest singles yeah. guys. They're so versatile. Oh, Jonah, um, Jonah Rock is one of my favorite wrestlers in Australia yeah down. he's one of the best man he's very creative and uh, he just makes everything look really really good which is cool so those two guys are really good um, Carlo and Rollins as well again um, they were wicked to work in tags um, i trying to think I don't I don't really have a favourite for, for a one on one match because I, I haven't really had too many well, you and Silver it was, no it wasn't 100 it was it was, an, it was a January show. I yeah, know it was. Reanimated, yeah. I think it was. That it was, was a great that, match. Yeah, it was all right. It was. Uh, there's stuff that we could. Is done. that on? Is that on the YouTube? I don't know. Oh sure. I have a sus. See if out. it's on the. If you can find it. Nick Armstrong <laughs> versus Matt Silver. That was a great it, match. It was. Um. It was fun because at the time I was looking to step it up and I wanted that that extra push with. Uh, with just showing my skills and and things that I've learnt. Um, you know, whilst being away and being super comfortable in the ring now. So there's a lot that uh, Lance taught us about, like telling a story and working a hold and, you know, just staying true to your wrestling as well. So I feel like I'm much more complete wrestler now. Yeah, I was going to say, how much more did you learn by going over? Oh, heaps, man. Like, I knew fucking nothing when I, when, <laughs> I, when I was beforehand. I watched some of the shit and I'm like, oh, I feel really bad. Because like, I was like, oh, like I'll watch my stuff and I'm like, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that was shit. And then... But then, I, like, I know it's like in you know a couple of years' time, I'm gonna look back at my matches now and be like, oh, that was terrible. And yeah. So like, you're always learning and you're always finding new things. But like, it's hundred times better since Connor Lance's. Um, 
like and just being comfortable is it more ring psychology uh, moves ring psychology uh, how to work a fucking punch properly um, how to do everything man like he teaches you like like uh, etiquette outside of the ring as well so he teaches you how to be respectful to people yeah that's one thing I hear like um, it was actually last night we are at training yeah and Jet says <laughs> None of the rookies come up and shook my hand. I said, do they know to? Yeah. And that's going to be instilled from the start. Like, he goes, well, you guys, he said, you guys knew too. I said, yeah, but yeah. Brody and I were wrestling fans. We were like, we we watched God knows how many shoot interviews. We watched, we knew that you have to come in and shake everyone's freaking hand. That's why we did it. So you got young guys coming in 16, 17. They yeah. didn't have a clue that you've got to come up and shake everyone's hand. I think it's, that's, uh, that's up to the guys training them and sort of getting that, getting that happening. Yeah. Um, so you go, rookies listening shake everybody's hand when you come into a building doesn't matter how long it takes you if it's out of your way don't interrupt them but just go up and shake their hand and, and say introduce hi. yourself and introduce yourself that's the best thing because again don't, don't introduce yourself as your gimmick name if you have one because <laughs> i hate that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh geez yeah that's a, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big thing like um you know just it's just a respect thing just the the old handshake introduce yourself um it's yeah, it's it's super important, man. Yeah. Um. In your opinion, what makes a good promotion? Good promotion. Um. Strong card, top to bottom. Um. You can't just have. All like you can't just have like a wicked main event and then a shit undercard. Everything needs to be uh, build up to it. Build up. Same as a match. You want to have a really you know, really strong start. Like strong matches throughout, but like you have to hit your key points and you have to l- learn to bring them up and down. Um, so that's what makes a good card. We'll try a good promotion. Um, so against, uh, so good card, uh, great production. So you need to have like a really good setup uh, for your entrance. I think that's super important. Again, if you've got um, people that have never been to a wrestling show before, they come to it and they see great production. Instantly, they're gonna be like, "Oh, this this is a legit promotion." Yeah, they expect to, even though it's an indie promotion, they yeah. must expect to see WWE quality production. They need to see just something like it's not hard to jazz up a bit of lights. Yeah. And I'm um, not saying that you have to, but I'm saying that that that's what they're expecting. Yeah, when they walk in, they're like, "Oh, I watch WWE, so I know what's gonna happen. It'll be pyro." And then we, yeah, well, you can't do pyro. You can certainly do at least have a quality sound system. Again, that I, I like that. I think um, you know if you've got a good membership base or sorry, a good fan base, good good crowd makes a good promotion. I mean, if you if you're coming out in front of like three people, <laughs> then you kind of go, well, this is this, it, the, the energy drop. So um, I think another thing that makes a good promotion is constant growth. Yep. So if you're gro- if you're continuing to grow and, and expand, well, at least continuing trying to find ways to grow. Yeah, exactly. Um, not doing the same shit. And expecting a different result, I think that's a that's a big thing that's going to push uh, promotions to 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 growing to a decent size, to make money as well, and to run it like a business. Because again, it is a business at the end of the day. And I think people forget that because they just want to go out and. I mean, we did that back when we were doing backyard. We we wrestled for ourselves, and it's like you know, oh, did you see my flip? And oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. You get to a point where it's like you know, if you want to do this and be successful at it, you got to treat it like a business and treat it like a job. You can't just you know half ass it and not train and you know what I mean like. I'll go out, I'll train, you know, six days a week with, with, you know, like for my body and then I'll do my wrestling on top of that, plus extra cardio, plus, you know, uh, like studying tape and... It, it doesn't hurt that you're a personal trainer, right? It doesn't hurt that I'm a personal <laughs> trainer, as well. I mean, like, but that's the thing, like, you've got, you've got an option to, to choose what you want to do and how you want to supplement yeah. your, your pro wrestling career. That, that's why there's, there's guys like Matt, like Grim, mm. who, that dude trains more than anyone I say. Mm, definitely. So like, that, and that's why I respect him so much because like he does that, and he also looks after all the the sort of the the, the other things. Yeah, just the, the little things stuff. to try and make everything. Yeah, big time. It's um, important, man. Aussie guys, you see that could make the, the that next step into a say a Rollins area, or you know what I mean, an overseas thing, but haven't tried yet. Hmm. Haven't tried. Because everyone says Slater should be there, and but yeah, yeah, it's it's like. So Slater's like an amazing worker. Um, so he's definitely, definitely one of the guys that I think should be. He should be in a new Japan. He should probably. be. He should be. Um, so I, like, if you rephrase the question, that guys that should be getting paid to to wrestle, I yeah, reckon that'd be right. better. We'll do a do a re- retake. Guys, you think there should be <laughs> guys that should be paid to be doing it? <laughs> okay, so Damien Slater, Elliot Sexton, Jonah Rock, Marcus Pitt, David Storm over in Perth. Um, 
who else is great? Robbie Eagles is fucking awesome. Um, I think Jed Armstrong. That guy. That guy. I think <laughs> I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he's uh, he's just you know he just needs to unlock that potential a bit more, and then he'll get out. Yeah, that's and, what and he, I was going to say. He's got a hell of a lot of potential. He's got so yeah. He's got he's ridiculous. Um, who else is really good? I'm trying to think. Sorry, man. It's the top of my head. Um, no, did right. I say Marcus Pitt? Yes. Yeah. I think he's great. I reckon, yeah. um First time I'd seen him was just the other, not long ago at that Russell Rampage. Yeah. And I've been dying to see him. Him and like Chris Weiss. Definitely. Yeah, Chris Weiss is awesome. Um, trying to think, or I'm just trying to think for like, in the States and stuff. Jack Hartley Jackson should be getting paid. Um, who else should be getting paid? Cracker Jack. I think he's wicked. Mikey Broderick. He's awesome. He's... Uh, Doesn't he work in Big Japan? Uh, he was in Osaka. Oh, yeah. Osaka, Osaka Pro, I think it was. I knew it was so, yeah, like so he's, dude, he's ridiculous. He's awesome. Um, he's charismatic. He's jacked. He's, you know, he, he worked at Lance's school. Yeah. Um, Carlo should be getting paid. I really, I, I don't I don't see it too long before, say, a, a Jonah Rock gets signed by Noah. Yeah. Like Nichols and Hayes. Yeah, definitely. He's he's good enough for it, man. It's, um, it's but again, it depends on what and, they want and, and what, the, what he wants too. and what he wants as well the promotion like if you've got imagine if like a, like say a Japanese company took all of the greatest like Australian wrestlers that wanted to work that style yeah and put them in as a promotion I don't know I don't know how it would draw I don't know what the demographics are like over there and how they respond to the Australian wrestlers or even you know the Americans and you know just um, you, I mean you don't really know until you're over there and I haven't yeah. been over there so I can't judge it um, Shane and, and Mikey are doing awesome, awesome things over in Japan, um, and they're working their asses off for it. And I mean, it shows. So they've stepped out of their comfort zone to go and pursue this, and they've they've grown and they've like they've they've smashed it. So as long as they keep progressing forward, you know what I mean. And we can't expect them to bring us over there. Yeah. We've got to go out and do it ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's important. Like never like wrestling doesn't owe you anything. At the end of the day, you have to put in what you want to get out of it. If you treat it like a professional professional thing yep. like a job or like a sport and things like that if you put in the time and effort then you'll get somewhere if you're drinking every weekend and fucking you know eating shit and training twice a week instead of fucking six or seven times a week then you're not really taking it seriously um, if you watch Raw and watch it as a fan rather than watch it and study it yep. then you're probably not going to get anywhere you know what I mean like there comes a transition where you go from fan to, to a professional Okay, mm -hmm. and there's a difference between a, a fan that wrestles and a wrestler that's working properly yep. for the business. You know what I mean? I know. I've noticed as of late. This is just personally myself. I've been watching a lot of old tapes now, and when I watch it, I really watch the manager. Yeah, you I'm watching not so what he much does. Watching the match. Yeah, I'm watching him to see what he's doing. Definitely, because it got down to the point where like I really don't know what to say to a referee to distract him. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you watch what the ref does. You watch. I mean, like a lot of the time, the the ref. Um, I'm, I mean, you're never watching the ref when you're watching wrestling, but there's referees out there, there's great referees out there that want to be like a pro referee. Yep. They're watching what they do, how they count. When we did Lance's uh, school, we had a guy come from, uh, he was a New Zealand guy, he lived in Australia and he'd come over for the last six weeks of training to do referee training. So Lance taught him where to be, where to position uh, for TV, which is, again, it's a different style. Working TV, you've got the, you know, the, the hard cam and all that. Um, where to stand so you're not in the road, where to stand in order to communicate certain things. Yep. Um, and then, th so there's a whole art form to refereeing and unless you, unless you like study that and, and know that, then how are you going to use it? You mm. know what I mean? And I mean, there's, there's more than two people working a match. Exactly. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's, that's the big thing that people don't realize there's... And that's, that's the one hard thing today because really, if you watch today's wrestling, the art of the manager is pretty much dead. Hmm. It, yeah. You've got. Well, what, what do you think about what, what's the, what's the purpose of the manager? What uh, is the purpose of a manager? Do you feel? It really depends on the guy that they want. It depends what you want out of the guy that's he's managing. Definitely. If if it's a guy that's a great worker yep. and can't talk, yeah, you want a manager that can really talk. Yeah. Get the guy over. Like what if that? the guy can talk? Because I think I think Cesaro can talk. I think I know he can talk. He can speak fucking multiple languages. Um, Paul Heyman is a, is a great talker. Obviously, he's got he generates a lot of heat. Yeah. And I think that's what they want in a manager. For the most part, they want to generate some heat. They also want to gener generate 
uh, another tool that they can use in the match. Yeah. They're gonna well, use... I, I mean, that that's why I think I'm there with Brooksy. Yep. Is to generate a bit more heat for him. Yep, definitely. Because he's a very good looking man. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. It's, no. it's, hard, it's hard to get girls to boo him. That's the, that, that's the problem we found. So let's bring out an ugly fat guy with him. A lot of uh, a lot of birds think CM Punk's all right, and uh, he, yeah. he remember when he was uh, healing yeah. it up. He, he was he cuts a great. The, the only thing I see with Brooksy, and I love Brooksy. Yep. Is that it doesn't matter how much healy stuff he says, when he says it, in the awkward way that he says it, <laughs> crowds just fucking love him. Yeah. The biggest thing uh, that people forget though is you've got body language. Okay, body language is going to communicate. I a think hell of a six, lot. sixty or seventy percent. Of your body language, so is that the communication? Yep. So sixty percent, sixty or seventy percent of your communication is body language, depending on how you move, how you look, the things that you do. So there's more than just words, and again, there's tonalities and things like that. Yeah. There's to to elicit an emotion from someone, you've got to do multiple things. Yeah. And unless you're aware of what you're doing, like some people just natural heels. Some people just naturally just like, oh, I don't like this guy. Yeah. And Stevie Rich is a good example. Like, he used to just get heat just from the way he looked. Yeah, but um, then when he was a baby face, he was with BWO. Yeah. One yeah, of the best baby faces they exactly. had. Yeah, and it's like, wow, like, we want to back this guy, you know yeah. what I mean? So, it's... It, I, I basically see myself just as a tool for the match. Definitely. Whatever they need, I'll try and... Yep. The and, that, and that's it. And the more, the more tools you have, the more variables you can you yeah. know, put into the match. And it's being there without. It's being there, but only being seen in the spots that you need to be seen in. Definitely, yeah. And I think that's a huge thing. Um, as as a manager, you you're meant to be. You're meant to make an impact when it's time. Yeah. But then the match then, is, the match isn't about you. The match yeah. isn't even about the other two workers. Yeah. You know, the match is is about the whole story. And again, the one, the one thing I I and this is the philosophy I have because I heard it on a. A shoot interview with Bobby Heenan. Yep. He was talking about what a manager is. Yep. And he said, I think I was a good manager because I managed like a wrestler and I wrestled like a manager. <laughs> nice. And I think that's the way you have to do it. Like, yeah. if I ever have to have a match yeah. and I dare say down the road they're going to try and book me in something, <laughs> it would literally be me tag in, kick, 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 get hit once, tag out real quick. Yeah. It could work, man. Um, and it will... The big thing about um, generating heat, especially as a manager, is you don't always have to hit somebody or do something bad. You can look like you're about to do something. And exactly. that's one thing of the things Lance stresses. Like, if I look like I'm going to go punch this chick in the face, I'm running over to her like, oh, don't do it, don't do it. Yeah. And then here he goes, and then, you know, I, then I don't even do it, you know what I mean? And then yeah. all, I, the, the, the face jumps in the road just at the last second. You're still going to generate heat. Exactly. And um, as a heel, you want to get as much heat as you can because mm. um, the more they don't like you the more they're going to want to see to or make it look like the, f- the the baby face is about to get me yeah exactly and have my guy cut him off exactly perfect um, so again no wasted movement though yeah and you don't that's always same, have to that's do that's the same in wrestling yeah like rest, as, as in like a wrestler wasted movement too many guys take too many steps big time and too many guys bully the ref that pisses me off <laughs> I think because like I mean oh, the, the true re- baby face leave the ref alone <laughs> yeah <laughs> you leave the ref alone you guys out there to be fair the, little Dana's just proud to be bullied though <laughs> he's so little <laughs> um yeah he's I think I think though. you gotta respect the ref because I mean uh, for the match purpose like if you've got if you've got uh, the referees being bullied and being told what to do by the big strong heel yep. then you've got no authority then you've got nothing to cheat with if you've yeah. can, if you got that's something the, if you've got rules there then you can bend them yeah that's the one thing I used to really like when they did that spot with Earl Hebner yeah when yeah. the guy would be pulling Earl and then Earl would just lose his shit at him boom and then he puts him in line oh shit sorry yeah. or like Triple H used to you know get in their face and the ref would push him back yeah you know what I mean exactly. and then the crowd are like yeah cool because the, the biggest thing you can do like the worst thing you can do is um, discredit the ref and then when they're like you know just lose all meaning for the match and it's just like you want them to have the emotion you want them to have the heat on the heel yeah and not on the, on ref. the ref okay and it's just and like you want that's that's the big thing there okay we're gonna wrap up with some fan questions so right. easy let's sh- Let's shoot at him. <laughs> That's a bit awkward. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> hey? um, God, this dude's name's long, so it's Michael Roach, I think. 
He's got like four names. I'm just going to say his first and last one. Michael Roach. Michael Roach. Yes. What was it like winning the MCW tag team titles and do you hope RCW bring in tag team titles of their own in the future? It was uh, a really good experience uh, heading over to MCW in Melbourne. You were the uh, first... Were you no, the first champs? No, we weren't the first champs. The first champs were... Oh, Hardway. Hardway Inc., yeah. yeah. So, we, I think... I guess we're the second champs. Yeah. Uh, so, we were the first team to defeat them for their MCW tag team titles. Um, it was really good. We got brought in. Um, you know, a really cool program over a couple of months with those guys. So, again, they're, they're professional dudes. Uh, Mike Burr is really, really good. I hear that from a lot of people. He's just... Because he, he gets it. He, he understands what to do and he understands how to make other guys look good and tell a story. And uh, again... I think, I think that's the best thing that could happen to Shooter. Big time. Yeah, dude. Guys. And that's the, that's the one thing that we lack in Australia is having those veterans to help us, you know, learn the ways. Like, that's why I went overseas because, I, I mean, I get to a point where I've learned, you know, as much as I feel I could learn and then I needed to, to get out and learn some more stuff. So it's like, where do you go? You can go interstate. You mm. can go... Um, so again, we, we, again, that's one thing I like about shooter yeah so he's been he went to Booker T's yep then he went to Big Japan to learn big time other stuff I mean like the guys in the states they've got the the advantage of okay this, this is the guys you can learn from um, you know you're gonna learn old school wrestling you're gonna you know learn from guys that have got 20 plus years in the business yep who the fuck has 20 plus years of business <laughs> in Australia? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm, I mean, that's that's a lot of time. That's a lot of shit you don't, like, people just don't understand. And, and a hell of a lot more shows happen. Yeah. Over there. Exactly. There's, there's a lot. I mean, guys are working, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. You know what I mean? We could never do a Wrestle Radio America mm. because there is a thousand indie shows on every weekend around the country. It's like, go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Um, so again, we don't have any vets. Um, well, not not like the 20 plus years experience I mean like if you're going to learn from a grandmaster in karate <laughs> do you want to learn from a guy that's got like 10 years experience or to learn from a guy that's got like 40 or 50 years yeah. experience you know what I mean yeah those are the guys that have practiced their craft and they understand the ins and outs they understand what what to do when shit goes down they understand how to get heat they understand because they've been doing it for so long they know how to work um, and then so that's where we're, we've got a bit of a disadvantage so Again, it, it would be awesome if things could change that way. Um, that's why you... I mean, we've got great schools now through like guys like Carlo Cannon over yeah. in, uh, in Melbourne. But see, you're going to have it You're gonna have it to the point now where in 20 years or, say, 10 years' time, you'll have your Mimics and your Grimms that have been in yeah. wrestling for 20 years. Definitely. So, and yourself, even. Definitely. But then, unless we get to that zone where we want to be, like, in, into the level that we want to be, like like that high end goal if, you, if you're wrestling 20 plus years but the only place you've been is a place like Riot City yeah. Wrestling or a place like MCW or a place like APW Perth um, if that's where you've been for 20 plus years that's like being the most experienced at McDonald's you know what I mean <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like oh you know I've been like like, like like it's it's I can make a burger yeah, like yeah. Business, do you know what I mean but, like, type of but if yeah if you've got that one burger but if you travel to the fucking Himalayas and you know do some special burger from the Himalayas. <laughs> I don't even know if they do. I don't even know if they do burgers. A there. Himalayan burger. A Himalayan burger. <laughs> it, but like, if, if if you go out and you took, go to the top burger place, you know what I mean? I mean, McDonald's is a pretty fucking big holding. Oh, so I've ruined that. But this um, analogy is just. Gone. But do you know what I mean? Like, like, like you have to like if if you're if you're teaching guys that want to um that want to learn to be in the WWE or in TNA yeah. or in Ring of Honor or in New Japan. Or in Noah, if you want to, if you were training guys to be there and you haven't been there, then you're really just ripping them off. I mean, there, there's an art to pro wrestling. You don't have to go to those big companies um, in order to to you know be a, but it a, helps. be a massive you know massive star. But like, I mean, guys like Carl Anderson in in, uh, in New Japan, he's fucking awesome. Um, Prince Devitt as well. Um, we've we've done a training seminar with them through Jack Hartley Jackson. Uh, in Adelaide here and that, that was I, at the time I had no idea who those guys were yeah. and I really regret not knowing who they were because I could have got so much more of that if I knew that um, that debit role was one of the most yeah it's good man it's done. good but like I mean like in 20 years time if you've got your, your, your mimics and your Grimm's who've gone out I mean Grimm's already done it he's went to Booker T school you know yeah. he's gone and he's you know he's he's, he's out outsourcing now and yeah. learning more and things and you can see it changing too you can see back. it changing yeah. once you get a taste of it man 
it's like, holy crap, there's this whole other side of things. It's yeah. like in Punk's DVD, he talks about, you know, I think I know a fair bit. And then he wrestles like Eddie Guerrero and he goes, oh my oh, God, God, I knew nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, I wrestled Lance and I was like, holy smokes. Like this guy was like, you know, people go, oh yeah, it's just a mid carter. Fuck off. Like he's, I don't think he is. He was so he good. He is so, yeah, like. He's, you've got to be good to walk into a promotion like WCW. And yeah. They put pretty much every belt on him to start with, <laughs> on his debut the way he talks about it though he reckons it was a rib from Russo because he reckons he did, to carry three fucking belts around <laughs> he's just like he's just yeah, like how, mm. yeah it's like Brooksy yeah exactly yeah it's a bit of a rib so um, but yeah like I mean like he's, he's a guy that's got so much skill and you have no idea what he can do and like you go oh he's the boring character he was playing a gimmick yeah he's worked everyone and he's yeah. again he's a funny dude and well he wasn't that he wasn't that gimmick in EC Dub yeah the impact players were great exactly yeah it was awesome um, so I mean people forget like he, he's a perfect example of a ring general guys like Fit Finley ring generals like you can see how they work and how they can control it um, and how they make other guys look really really strong you've got guys like Gen- uh, Generico so again Sami Zayn uh, you can see how he works a match. He he can work anybody, and he can make them look like awesome. Same as Chris Jericho, ring generals. Yeah, those are the guys that are in the ring that are controlling the match. They're getting the most out of every single person. They can work a match with anyone. Yeah. Um, if you watch a match with the great Carly, for example, <laughs> you can have against, one, one type of match. You watch him in a match against um, someone that's not a good worker. All right, someone that's a bit average. Watch that versus a match against uh, like a great Carly versus a fit Finley. Fit Finley will make the great Carly look so strong with one to two things. The way he sells it, the yeah. way he sets it up, the way he moves. And that's what, again, it takes to be a good storyteller. And to ma- he makes great Carly look like this big beast. And again, being that big, you know, he's he's got the look. It's like, okay, well, how do we put, make everyone believe what we're doing is really yeah. happening? Okay, going back to the question. Yes, sorry. Okay, you've already answered what was it like winning the MC Dub tag titles. Yep. Gotcha. Do you hope RC Dub bring in tag titles of their own in the future? That was a very long <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, that would be great. Um, it would be great for the promotion because tag wrestling kicks ass. Yeah, um, I agree. And as long as everyone's working it properly. I agree, RCW management. It'll be good. So maybe, uh, I don't know, who would... Uh, who do you reckon? Uh, who do you reckon could be contenders for the uh, RCW tag titles if they brought them in? Well, it'd be you guys, the Armstrongs. The Armstrongs. Yeah. Um, I think definitely Marvel and Voodoo. Yeah. You got two of two of the. They are really. There's like, some guys against Marvel's some, uh, one of the most the veteran one of the most veteran guys in the country and nobody knows about it. Yeah. Which I think is amazing that he's got a, a good depth of knowledge. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Ashton Brady, they can be a good. I don't know so much contenders, but they can definitely be in the mix. Yeah, and definitely. Like this past weekend, I think give them six months to a year. Yeah, and maybe Santa Maria and Wheeler. Yeah, depending on how they gel, they yeah. just seem the way you watch them work. They seem like they could work well together. Hmm. Definitely. So there's four or five teams. Definitely, that's cool. And then you can you got options of the interstate people. Exactly. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to have, say, the hard way come over and work. Mm-hmm. I'd love to have bloody um, Marcus Pitt and Jonah Rock. Yeah. I even get, like, Jonah and Jag. Yeah. I'd love to see a Jonah and Jag against you guys. Definitely. That's so nice. Look at the smile. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, like, it'll be, it'll I like be, hearing that. <laughs> it'd be good. Um, Mr. Gambino asks, any relation to Neil? Uh, Neil is my father (laughs) (laughs) Um, and my other father is Lance so Ah. Lance Armstrong and Neil Armstrong that's actually how uh, the name come about Um, talking with Damien Slater and we were talking about uh, like an astronaut gimmick and um, and then it was something about the Armstrong I'm like that'd be cool and then it gets to the whole arm strong and I was like oh that's Uh, funny and then we've developed into uh, there's the Armstrong, which is Jet, and then there's Arm Stronger, which is Nick. So, a bit of a sibling rivalry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan Leonard asks, can you play the trumpet as well as your Uncle Louis? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> is there a guy called Louis Armstrong? Yeah. God damn it. You know that What a Wonderful World? Oh, good tune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a Uncle Louis. Oh, sorry. 
I don't listen to hip hop. Nah, <laughs> I'm joking. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, nah, I know this song. Um, can I play the trumpet? I've been told from a musician that I've got good embouchure. <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's basically <laughs> where. <laughs> well, if anyone can take a joke answer and turn it, joke question and turn it into an actual answer. <laughs> I know, it's, it's yeah. I've got yeah. I don't know. I uh, <laughs> I can't play the trumpet too well. I can play the drums pretty good though. Ian Davis asks, when are you going to turn on Jet, beat the crap out of him, and join Team Eastman? That was him, that wasn't me. Hmm. it's a good question. Um, no, we would we'll, we'll, we'll work and welcome you on board. I'm just saying. Well, I don't Same know. Way. I don't know. It depends how much money is on the, on the table. It'd take a fair bit of money for me to turn on my own brother. Yeah, but... who'd do that? <laughs> who'd turn on their own brother? Exactly. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, nah, I don't see that happening. Uh... We're too we're too much of a of a good tag team. We um we, we again we want to, we want to have stuff happen where we can uh, showcase our skills a bit more. And I think we're stronger as a tag team at the moment. Exactly. However, I would love to do some single work. So maybe maybe the Armstrongs can have a break and uh, sort of develop <laughs> del- develop our own characters a bit more and uh, just show what we've got to offer. Because I know that uh, like we're great as a tag team, but if you see us as a solo act, I think you're going to be quite quite surprised so hmm. we'll see what happens okay. and the final one from Travis C who's stronger you or Jet oh, stronger depends what we're talking we're talking stronger intelligence so we're talking stronger muscles <laughs> we're talking uh, stronger body odor I don't know what we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> wow um, I don't know man he uh, it depends on the day <laughs> <laughs> there you go alright before we go mate uh, put out all your, your Facebook plugs, your Twitter, your inner focus. Yeah, so... Uh, Get the business out there, mate. Yeah, so Nick Armstrong uh, is, is my Facebook thing. I mean, you just find me on Facebook yeah. with Nick Armstrong like that. Um, my Twitter is Nick... Sorry, at Nick Armstronger. Because <laughs> um, Nick Armstrong was taken. So, uh, Son of a bitch. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter's good. I like Twitter. I've um, got a website the uh, thearmstrongs.com.au um, we've also got t-shirts on there as well so we're trying to develop some new shirts if you guys have any ideas let me know I sent you one yeah you did yeah <laughs> perfect so that, we'll hope we'll get that sorted out and we'll come up with that soon um, also innerfocushealthandfitness.com.au is uh, is the personal training stuff so if you guys are interested in doing some personal training learning from uh, Nick Armstrong or Jet Armstrong definitely uh, suss that website out um Again, we do we all, all sorts of food, nutrition. Yeah, they're a full full service. Full service. But, studio um, gymnasium. Come and watch an RCW live show, though, guys. This is a... Uh, we're much better experienced live. Um, our very our product Our product is is one of the best in the country, and I've wrestled, you know, in the top promotions in Australia. Um, and I know that, you know, our production's amazing. Even compared to Canada, like, um, you see some of the stuff over there. It's uh, it's good, but Riot City Wrestling has has definitely got some of the best production in the world. So. Big shit after Cookie and Dan. Big time. Those guys, I mean, they're doing great things for us. So, um, and you and you you know it. You come to one of our shows and you can go see some other shows. As soon as you sit down, you're, as soon as you sit down, you're like, yeah. this is this feels good. This feels uh, this that feels was proper. Two two three years ago, I reckon it was the first show I went to. Yep. And as soon as we walked in, we went, wow, this is actual for real. Yeah. Right. Very nice. 